And welcome back to Roy on Rescue, another episode on Roy on Rescue. This time we're going to talk about lightning strikes. We, not too long ago, had a situation where there were some individuals out at a racetrack. Um, they were watching the races, they were informed that a storm was coming, and uh, before they could actually get out of the parking lot, they had lightning strikes happening, and... Um, Cloud to ground lightning struck in a parking lot. It actually killed one individual and hurt others. Um, some of the things that we need to think about as we talk about this is how do we protect ourselves from lightning strikes? Keep in mind that lightning strikes occur um, more frequently than we realize. And I think we just simply become very... Uh, um, used to it. We, we believe that when we're in a vehicle, when we're by a vehicle, when we're around other structures, the structures that are higher than we are will get struck first. We're in, in no danger. And what we don't realize is that that amount of energy that comes through that lightning strike can affect even in the, in the surrounding area of that lightning strike. Um, metal, water, wood are all these conductors that um, that we just take for granted. Now, this individual did not seem like they were in any danger. They were under the tailgate of their vehicle. Um, most of us would have thought that, that we were safe and sound, that the, the lightning would have strike something else higher than, than they were. Um, you know, you kind of get under the shelter and you think, geez, even if it hits my vehicle, then my vehicle will ground it and I'll be safe. And unfortunately, by the sounds of the report, it did not in this case. You know, when we hear thunder, we need to understand that that means there's lightning. And if we believe that there's lightning, then it can uh, strike us. And, you know, there's all of these different um, articles and there's a bunch of different accounts where people have been mountain climbing or hiking and the hair on the back of their neck, the hair on their head stands up. They get this very electrified feeling prior to the electric, uh, the electric strike. We do understand that there's a lot of static electricity in the air during lightning storms. Um, that does not necessarily have to be a prerequisite, though, for someone to be about ready to get struck by lightning. And, and deaths from lightning strikes occur much more frequently than we realize. The best thing to do is when there's an approaching storm and we hear thunder, that's the time to get inside of a solid structure, I, ideally something that is grounded that will um, protect us from the lightning strike and, um, and keep us out of harm. If we are struck by lightning, or in this case, if we're struck by lightning, there's not a whole lot we're going to be able to do about it. So it's more if you witness someone getting struck by lightning um, or nearly struck by lightning, but they were affected by the surrounding energy, there are some things to be aware of. Number one, we are not on a danger. You know, uh, the old adage, lightning never strikes twice in the same location, that is just not a good basis to, uh, to follow. Uh, we can have lightning strikes in the same vicinity. Uh, in fact, in this case, I, it sounds like later in that same day, lightning struck into the parking lot again, um, injuring a few people but not killing anybody. Uh, so, so to say that lightning doesn't strike in the same place twice, that's ridiculous. Uh, so if someone is struck by lightning, remember the danger of a second strike is always present. Um, we should be handling this in a very um, cautious way. Uh, we should remember that, that the goal is to get the individual drug into a facility, into a building safely where we can begin to administer basic life support if they're in cardiac arrest or other wound uh, traumatic injury damage management. Uh, activation of EMS 911 is, is, should be immediate. Um, get an ambulance on the way. Make sure 911 knows or emergency services knows that this individual was possibly or was definitely struck by lightning. And then let the EMS division know what the status of the person is. They are not breathing, they do not have a pulse. They are not breathing, not moving, not talking. Um, we are gonna start CPR. And then of course we would start deep, fast chest compressions at at least 100 times a minute. 
if you're going to do rescue breaths with the chest compressions, remember to do uh, the 30 compressions followed by two rescue breaths, and we do that for at least two minutes. Um, prior to EMS arriving, we're going to continue those two-minute cycles, uh, checking to see if there's any responsiveness in between the cycles. But we're just really, after two minutes of CPR, ideally we're going to have a second rescuer begin those same compressions and rescue breath sequences. If you're not comfortable doing rescue breaths, make sure to at least do fast, continuous, deep compressions at least 100 times a minute after activation of emergency medical services and get EMS there as fast as possible. Um, stay safe. Stay out of lightning storms. If you hear thunder in the distance, that means that there is lightning, and we don't want to wait until we're having lightning strikes around us to seek shelter. Uh, if someone's struck by lightning, the, the goal is if you're going to rescue them, get them and drag them to safety as fast or carry them to safety as fast as possible where we can continue resuscitative efforts um, in a safe environment. I hope this helps. Stay safe, keep on rescuing. Until next time, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.